Hello, my name is Tim Bernard, and this is uh, the third uh, sign that our mother gave us uh, back in the late 70s. Uh, been a little busy, sorry I haven't gotten this out sooner, but our, this is from February 11th, 1979, the Feast of Our Lady of Lords. Uh, and Lords, if you don't know, happened in the middle of the 1800s and along with La Salette, a La Salette even more of a warning. Uh, so we've been getting these warnings for a very long time about what is going on. And you can clearly see this being set up, uh, not only being set up in the 70s, uh, but really coming to fruition now as we are nearing uh, the later stages of the season uh, that we are in, which is the purification of uh, the church and the whole human race. I am your Immaculate Mother. I appeared on earth in the poor grotto of Masa Belli in order to point out to you the road you must walk in these difficult times. It is my road, that of purity, of grace, of prayer, of penance. It is a road which my son, Jesus, has already pointed out to you to lead you all to the Father in his spirit of love. You have within you his own spirit, which causes you to cry out to God as Father, because he has shared his divine nature with you. Walk the road of love. Make the place within you for the spirit of love, which is bringing you in life to be more and more united. Love one another as Jesus has loved you, and you will become truly one. Unity is the perfection of love. And so Jesus has desired that his church be one to make of her the sacrament of God's love for men. Today my Immaculate Heart trembles and is anguished to see the division within the church. This division which has penetrated the church is the third sign which indicates to you with certainty that the final moment of her painful purification has come. If in the course of the centuries, the church has many times been torn by division, which has led many of my children to separate themselves from her. I nevertheless obtained from Jesus the singular privilege of her interior unity. But in these times, my adversary has, with his smoke, succeeded in darkening even the light of this divine prerogative of the church. This interior division is manifesting itself even among the faithful, who often set themselves one against the other in attempt to, to defend and better promote the truth. Thus the truth is betrayed by even them as the gospel of my son, cannot be divided. This interior division sometimes even leads priests to set themselves against priests, bishops against bishops, and cardinals against cardinals. For never before, as in these times, has Satan so succeeded in finding his way into their midst, rendering asunder the precious bond of their mutual love. This interior division is expressed by the tendency to leave to himself and to abandon, so to speak, the very vicar of Jesus, the Pope, who is a son particularly loved and enlightened by me. My motherly heart is wounded to see how the silence and neglect of my children often envelop the wounds and actions of the Holy Father. 
while he is increasingly struck and impeded by his adversaries. Because of this interior division, his very ministry is not sufficiently supported and furthered by the whole church, whom Jesus has wanted to be united about the successor of Peter. My motherly heart grieves to see how even some pastors refuse to let themselves be guided by his enlightening and trustworthy words. The first way of being separated from the Pope is that of open rebellion. But there is also another way, more subtle and dangerous. It is that of proclaiming one's unity openly, but of dissenting from him interiorly, letting his teachings fall into the void and in practice doing the contrary of what he says. O church, mystical body of my Jesus, in your painful journey to Calvary, you have reached the eleventh station, and you see yourself wrenched and torn in your members, which are again nailed to the cross. What must you do, my sons, apostles of my immaculate, and sorrowful heart, you must become a hidden seed, ready even to die for the internal unity of the church. And so I am leading you each day to a very great love for and fidelity to the Pope and the church united to him. For this reason, I am now letting you share in the anxiety of my motherly heart. For this reason, I am forming you in the heroism of sanctity and leading you with me up Calvary. Through you also, I will be able to help the church emerge from her painful purification so that in her all the splendor of her restored unity may be manifest to the world. And now we can see that happening and it's taking many forms today here. Uh, we just saw just a couple months ago uh, Pope Benedict XVI basically fall on the sword because of uh, the homosexual lobby uh, and interior division even within the Curia in Rome. And now it's up to Pope Francis to try to clean that out. Because with him coming in, he gets a chance to uh, start fresh. But it's not going to go away that easily, for it is deeply entrenched in the church. The problems in the seminaries, still, because that's the choke point for uh, new priests. Uh, there's a great book called Goodbye, Good Men, uh, which goes into how... Uh, this homosexual lobby took over uh, and infiltrated the church through the seminaries especially to control who would get in and who the new priests would be. And this is happening even today. Um, we have zero priests in the Seattle Diocese next year. We only had one ordained this year. I mean, give me a break. There, there's just no way uh, that they're weeding out everyone that's going in like that, that these are all bad people. So uh, hopefully the bishops will deal with this and clean up the, uh, the problem within the seminary. And, and I, I'll, I'll give you an example. One of the first casualties of uh, this sex scandal was the president of a seminary in Ireland, uh, Father McGinnity, uh, who is now uh, the um, spiritual director for Christina Gallagher. And when some seminarians came to him, uh, this was quite a few years ago now, and said, hey, we've got a problem with one of our professors. You know, he's not on the up and up. He's, you know, hitting on us and stuff. And so he went to the bishops in Ireland and said, hey, we've got this problem. What are we going to do about this? 
And so what did the bishops do? They fired Father and then tried to demonize him and then elevated uh, the person who the accusations were against and be, made him the president of the seminary. Uh, and of course, he didn't change his ways. And they finally had to remove him and apolog publicly apologize uh, to Father for that. Uh, and we also have the story of Akita, Japan, uh, where our mother came in the 80s, which was endorsed by uh, Cardinal Ratzinger at the time when he was the head of the Doctrine for the Faith, and of course went on to become Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. And uh, she was talking about the problems uh, within the church and this division that would happen with priest against priest and bishop against bishop and cardinal against cardinal. And uh, it's, it's really unfolding as this, what, what will, and the sex scandal was not the, this was like more the tip of the iceberg of what was going on. The, the underlying problems have not been solved and dealt with. Um, while while the, the last two popes have tried to get a lot more orthodox uh, people in as bishops and cardinals, uh, there's going to be some very trying times coming with uh, not only with this church of the world, but also with the lies that governments are going to promote uh, and uh, it, it's going to be very hard uh, with the economic collapse that is continuing and going to expand. And the lies that the government and the money changers will force out there on the people. And then they're going to ask the, uh, the church to go along with it for the good of the people. When in reality, at some point, you have to stop and just deal with the problem, which is also the answer that we got from the sex scandal. While we didn't completely deal with it, we had to say, hey, enough is enough, and we have to stop and um, deal with this issue. And we need to talk more about it. That's one of the problems uh, we have. Talking and discussing things is not division, and not even agreeing is not a problem, but it's by not having communication lines and, and not discussing things and having open uh, debates about the great issues of the day and what is going on is where it leads more to this uh, divisiveness. When push comes to shove, you don't have lines of communications formed between people. And so it's, it's a lot more divisive and you're not as used to it and the other thing that's not being uh, talked about enough is the influence of the devil right now. As our mother points out, the adversary uh, has never been given as much power as he has right now. Uh, this was from great mystics uh, in the church, like uh, Sister Emmerich spoke of this uh, back almost 200 years ago, saying that, at the end of the 20th century, the devil would be peaking and would be his time. Uh, earlier in the 20th century, we have uh, St. Faustina, and she was given <clears throat> the uh, divine mercy, which is a great grace given to the church for these times uh, that we are in. And so we need to make use of this and remember uh, one of the, the classic uh, proverbs is those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. And we need to remember Leo XIII and his vision of Jesus and the devil talking about the church in a similar fashion as the devil and God the Father talked about Job. 
and realize that the devil has been given great powers as our mother pointed out in the reading about the smoke of Satan which is something also that Pope Paul uh, brought up uh, the smoke of Satan entering the church and we know this from just a practical standpoint how openly uh, people were put into the church to bring it down uh, you know the communists openly are trying to create chaos and division within the church to bring it down they openly uh, there's that book uh, AA see there I believe it's 1025 or 1125 and it's anti-apostle uh, that was his number and uh, the Regimes have openly been trying to put men into the priesthood as like sleeper spies uh, to go through the motions, but to destroy the church from within. Uh, there was that cardinal not long ago who uh, was displaced because it was found out that he was helping the communists to undermine John Paul II when he was uh, pope. So, uh, there's a lot of things that we need to become aware of to lessen the division that is coming. But you can see lines being drawn uh, from people who want to go with the flow and uh, become a part of the world and, and not be outcast by what's popular this week. Um, with all of the uh, recent stuff about gay marriage and stuff, which has nothing to do with equal rights for, for the gay people. Uh, the, the people on top are just using this as a divisive instrument. And I've sh shown you before in my uh, news uh, magazine that some of these... Leaders openly talk about the complete destruction of the family. And the eugenicists who are running society, or trying to run it, uh, they don't completely run everything, but they control the media. The devil is in charge of the media and is bringing this stuff about. Um, and, and we're going to have really trying times, and at some point people are going to have to stand up. You know, at the height of the sex scandal, only half of the people in the church thought anything was wrong. Um, you know, and not dealing with an issue doesn't make it go away. Um, you know, and, and there's going to be great trials coming. Um, we're going to see massive, well, they're trying to lead us into another war. Uh, with China and Russia, another world war. And, and it'll be brought about by lies, by people who sit back. Because uh, all the other wars have been lies. This whole war on terrorism is nothing but lies. The shootings are lies. The Boston bombing is riddled with lies. In, in case you forgot, they had uh, someone they were going to roll out uh, and say did it. Uh, they'd announced a press conference at the um, Boston Courthouse, and then they saw that we had the pictures of the guy with his handlers, and so they said, oh, well, we have a bomb scare, and they evacuated the Boston Courthouse, and then came up with those two uh, new kids who had who were there, they were patsies, they were set up. It's unlikely that they had, that, well, the one didn't even have the right color backpack. And we've gone, I've gone into more stuff on that, but this just shows, see, at some point, these lies, which lead to murder and theft, you know, 
are going to come home to roost you know which commandments are ok with jesus you know our basic foreign policy while it's not our foreign policy it's the globalists who run our country is that they are covetous lying murdering thieves i mean that's what's going on and eventually they're going to start well they've already started killing us and there's just silence on that topic just silence you know there is division coming i mean i i hope it's as small as possible but there are those who do not want to wake up who want to remain asleep one thing we should all be able to do though is to unite around how we need to live our lives which is the ten commandments we should be seeking the truth and bearing witness to it as our, our mother in there talked about who's got the most truth well it, it's not even there's no room for blatant lies and murder I mean, I, I really don't see how we're, well, and she'll even go on to talk about the, the small remnant being left. So division is coming. Um, you know, we need to try to stay together. And the way to do that is through lines of communication and by coming together together on the rock and she mentions uh, her road to Calvary uh, which we'll get into in the fourth and last sign um, which is part of the secret of Fatima we also have a uh, good chance at uh, Pope Francis uh, if he continues on his path I mean if he really fights for the poor and uh, for the truth uh, which he appears to be right now, <laughs> they're not going to like that very much. Um, and just as they tried to remove John Paul II when they tried to assassinate him, they were able to remove Benedict XVI because he was a little too orthodox for them. Uh, they're going to do the same thing with Francis. Uh, you know, so we, the, the people, the body of the church, need to come together, need to form lines of communication, which will help unite us so that we can talk about things and discuss things and uh, not be left to these outside influences uh, that, that are not going to go away. They're going to keep coming and to realize that when we look at chaos and division that it's the devil who is implanting this and trying to strengthen that because those are his tools uh, chaos and division are what he loves which is also what the globalists and the new world order love order out of chaos is one of their uh, modus operandi as it were so anyway hopefully you all have a prayer life. You're all doing some fasting uh, or some other form of penance. Uh, because through prayer and fasting, we can change the world. Uh, and uh, there's a great prayer called the Memorari uh, that never was it known that anyone who sought our mother's intercession was left unaided. Because she is the mediatrix of all graces. Uh, this is deemed and she's being used by her son as her son sees fit it is his kingship he is the one uh, who uh, everything was given to by the father because of his perfect act of love through his life uh, and death on the cross and so he uses his mother as he deems fit within his kingdom and we are wise to seek our mother's help and intercession in these troubling times that we live in. So uh, if you don't do any adoration, I'd encourage you to do some. 
And uh, if you never pray the rosary, I recommend you start or at least uh, get a prayer life. And uh, remember, together we can change the world and lessen what is coming. Have a good day.